we thank the member of the government. We now call on the member of opposition. Chair, adjudicators, team government, team opposition, and the house at large. A lot has been said in this debate, but I think the best way to begin to start from the beginning. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a global society where current affairs is essential to keep the ordinary citizens out there updated and informed. But the question is, will the information we get from journalists increase our knowledge or will it simply increase the amount of information in the world. And is military force is really the answer? We believe no. Before I get to my argument, I have the following points of rebuttal to issue out to the government bench. <clears throat> Before I go to the point of rebuttal, the government bench, I think, they failed to highlight to us why, why is it, despite looking at the journalist, why is it important for us to use military forces? Why should we use, just use military forces to just rescue these journalists? Why shouldn't we use police officials, religious forces, cult forces? Why should we use military forces? What, what is so special about them? What, no thank you, what mechanism, tools, machinery do they have to rescue the journalists? And the other point they mentioned, I think was the deputy prime minister from the government bench. He said, journalists go out there to get the truth. But what do you have to say about journalists who go to war zones just to attract attention and be in the limelight for themselves? What about them? For shame. Oh, thank you. For shame. <clears throat> and you also, you also mentioned when we send in a military force, we, 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 won't, we won't be sending an army or a troop of people. We'll be sending a tact force of a limited number of people. But the enemy will still perceive this as a threat because they will think that an avalanche of troops are on their way coming to attack For them. shame! <laughs> now, coming to my argument, my first argument is using military forces to rescue journalists leads to wars. Also, <clears throat> here's, how, here's how it leads to wars. When you use military forces, no thank you, I'm still going to continue my argument. When you use military forces, to rescue wars. Military forces, they have guns, all the type of uh, uh, mach mach machinery or mechanism that they use to shoot. So in other ways, the other troops of the other country are also going to resort to their own, own machinery or tools to start a fight and move that with, the, with the other with the country which is trying to save the journalists. So what started as a rescue attempt for one journalist to lead to a war between two point. countries. No, thank you. And that will also be affecting the innocent lives. A journalist, one journalist who came into a certain country to do whatever investigation he wanted to do would have an indirect effect on the other citizens. On that point. No, thank you. We were just residing in that country. And I think besides, on my second point, besides using military forces to rescue journalists, we can, there are other platforms that we can use. Like for example, because if we use military forces, the military force belongs to a certain country. So when it goes into there, it's gonna be bias. It's gonna say, okay, our journalist was, was true, was, was our journalist had good intentions of doing this and this and this. So our journalist was right throughout. But if you use forces related to organizations such as the United Nations, there won't be any biasness. So in that case, so in that case, potential, Potential circumstances or consequences such as wars will be avoided if you use unbiased organizations. Before you continue, I'll take your point, Prime Minister. Okay. Isn't it already a threat when you uh, capture the people of the country, of the other country? So how would it be a threat to the country that already captured the people? If you capture the journalist, yes, it's true that it would be a threat. But if you 
if you mention or somehow reveal the reason of the capture, then maybe the the the, the country which which should be used in rescuing the journalist in question will reconsider rescuing them. Before, before you continue. Yes, I'll take your point. Do you really suggest that the United Nations, which is a separate um, organization, should now rescue another person and uh, well take ownership of maybe that war that we started with, with them? No, the, the, United, the United Nations should only step in when 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 there's a when there's a potential of a war happening between the two countries in question. If if maybe the two countries have no business towards each other, then the United Nations should not step in. But if that tends to happen, then when they can step in. Then my last point. Mm, Military forces tend to do more harm than good when rescuing journalists. If we take a look at the Marikana incident which took place in 2012, there we saw how police forces illustrated their unskilledness by taking hundreds of lives. What started, what started, what started as, because when they got there, they were, their main aim was to try and restore order and keep calm but it turned into chaos. So if you use military forces who initially would want to rescue the journalist, who would initially want to rescue the journalist, in the end they will in the end they will end up since the enemy not the enemy, since the enemy would see that okay these people are coming, they're coming in large numbers, so you think that a war's about was about to a war's about to arise, then the enemy and sorry, the military force that that will be coming. Won't now okay now we're not going to rescue the journalist. We're gonna have another mission. And that other mission is fully destroying the enemy or the group that captured our journalist. So trying to rescue one journalist leads to more harm than good in such a way that not only will not it's not only the other the enemy who's going to suffer and also the innocent citizens who are not even involved in this Confrontation. So, with all that, mentioning how military forces lead to war, how military forces expose biasness, and also taking into consideration the American incident, we believe military forces should not rescue journalists captured by the enemy. Thank you.